today we're going over chronic venous insufficiency. So let's get started. So anatomy of what's going on is it's the veins. So this is like any, usually veins in the lower extremity are most affected because they're most gravity dependent. Like they're all the blood's being pulled to the ground. So that is usually one of the ways we're going to be having a uh, chronic venous insufficiency. So just some anatomy about the veins itself. Remember in the veins, there's not really much of a pulse, if any, especially as you get like farther and farther down the leg into like the main veins into the leg. So here's the thing. By the time it gets to the veins, it has literally no pulse. Like I'm saying like not much of a pulse being like maybe like the arteries expand a little bit, but you're not feeling like I would say pretty much no pulse. And here's the thing, because the way that blood is getting back to the heart, through the veins, because there is like no pulse in the veins, really, it's going through valves. So the valves will open, allow it to go through and they'll close. And then when the muscles contract, the valves open, the blood goes through it, it closes. So that's kind of what's going on. So also blood pressure is going to be low to none because there's not really much pressure on the walls of the arteries. Cause at this point it's just being squished by muscle pumps and squished by muscle pumps that it's going up to the heart. So really no blood pressure in the veins. Uh, the blood is going to be the same temperature as the body. So it's not like super warm, like how it's going to be when in arteries after it's just like gone through the heart and like warmed up and everything like that. And it's going through like muscles and stuff. By the time it gets to the um, veins, the blood is just body temperature at this point. And then the vessel walls are going to be thin. So remember in uh, arteries, the three layers of the blood vessels, so you got the tunica externa, the tunica media, and the tunica intima. So for the veins, all those are pretty small. And then remember with arteries, the tunica media, that's the uh, smooth muscle that is going to be thicker. So very thin walls and um, veins. And then the valves are present. So that's kind of what I was talking about with the muscle pump, the valves, when the muscle squeezes, the valves open, the blood goes through, and then afterwards they shut. So essentially, as long as those valves are working properly, blood is eventually getting back towards the heart. Moving on. So some etiology of how chronic venous insufficiency kind of happens. Essentially, it's venous incompetence. So that could mean that the valves are not working or that for some reason that the veins themselves are just not allowing blood to go back to the heart. Maybe the veins are like getting deformed. Maybe they're getting twisted, kind of like how varicose veins is and stuff like that. That could be something that's going on. Could also be venous hypertension. So that's if the blood pressure is high in the veins. And remember, as we just previously talked about, there's really not supposed to be any blood pressure pressure pushing on the walls of the veins because the walls are very thin. So that is where fluid starts to leap, seep, seep out into the interstitial space. And then that's how we're starting to see all that edema starting to build up. So the lymph system, remember the lymph system kind of hangs out alongside the venous symptom. Uh, the lymph system kind of hangs out alongside the venous system. And what happens is as like the fluid might seep out of the veins, it's kind of going right into the lymph system. So the lymph is kind of pulling it out of the interstitial space and then any excess stuff that goes out of the veins. So if it's like really, really like the venous system is really incompetent, it's going to just spew out and then the lymph can't keep up with it. So it's overflowing kind of thing. So that's why we'll see all of the um, edema starting to happen. And then uh, I learned this for actually, I learned this from an interesting pamphlet at one of the clinics I was working at that varicose veins is like a small form of chronic venous insufficiency. I, I don't know why I didn't put the two and two together, but then I looked it up and it was all a big thing. So an exacerbation of varicose veins can start to cause chronic venous insufficiency. That is why vascular people, the vascular surgeons and stuff like that, keep an eye on those varicose veins to make sure that they're not progressing towards something more deadly and more chronic, such as chronic venous insufficiency. And then probably one of the more co most common ones is going to be a valve dysfunction. So again, those valves will like the muscle will squeeze the valves open, it'll go through and then the valves will shut. And then all of a sudden, if it's not working well, the valves either will prolapse and like it's coming out or it's getting stuck because, you know, gravity dependent, the valves are keeping it from flowing all the way back down, might have some backflow, which makes it flow out into the interstitial space. Or it could just be that the valves are like not shutting all the way. That's the same kind of thing. Or they just, they just don't work. So one of those things. So what does it look like? Oh yeah. I have pictures of wounds on here, guys. So Facebook is probably going to cover this. Um, if this is on YouTube, hopefully they don't cover this either on a podcast. You can't see the pictures, 
So um, sorry, guys, but I'm going to describe them to you. So essentially with a Venus insufficiency, the Boars is going to care about what does it actually look like? So they might show pictures of these wounds on the boards just to kind of be like, what's going on here? So wound appearance for a chronic Venus insufficiency ulcer, because the ulcers are kind of the things that the boards cares about a lot. How does the ulcer look? It's going to have... Um, it's going to be located above the medial malleolus. So you can see on both of these pictures I have here that the wound is located just above the medial malleolus, kind of like along like the medial side of the leg sort of thing. And it's going to be a shallow, irregular shape. So it's not going to be super deep, especially this one on the bottom. You can see here that it's pretty shallow, but like it's a really weird shape. Like it kind of looks like Patrick the star sort of thing. But at the same time, like these are like super irregular. Like I can't really describe the sheep. So that's kind of what's going on with the wounds here. So, and then for the exudate amount with a chronic insufficient venous insufficiency ulcer, there's gonna be a ton and ton of exudate. So it's like leaking out. I remember one of my classmates referred to it as leaky legs. But if that helps you remember it, yes, chronic insufficiency ulcer, there's tons of exudate. And I put a note here that a common wound dressing that is used for a heavy exudate wound, such as a chronic in venous insufficiency ulcer, would be a calcium alginate dressing to help soak up all the exudate because that's used when you have heavy, heavy exudate to just slurp it all up. Um, and elevation will help as well to make sure that this is, um, we're working on the edema itself. So elevating the leg should alleviate the pain and then also help with the edema. So remember the edema is due to the insufficiency of the veins and that is why there's tons of edema showing up. So another thing I wanna talk about is the skin temperature or tissue changes. So the skin temperature is going to be normal because there's arterial blood flow to the area because it's the veins that are affected. So remember the tissues get the arteries first or the blood from the arteries first and then they'll dump it into the veins. So because that forward pathway is all good, skin temperature is normal and you'll have pedal pulses present. Now, with this being said, the skin is going to turn a brownish kind of color due to old blood pooling in the area. Because remember, blood is like not going to where it needs to go. It's just getting stuck. So it's kind of going to get it really flaky as well. And so you'll see like this, like especially on this picture here, you can see just like the brown discoloration around it. And then it just looks really, really dry. And again, as I was talking about before, because the arteries are not affected, the pulses are normal because blood flow is not impaired where we can feel a pulse. Because remember, we can't feel a pulse in the veins and they have super low blood pressure because, and like pretty much no blood pressure. There's like no pulse, no blood pressure essentially in the veins and they have thin walls. So we're not seeing any sort of pulse problems with this because the pulse problems are not where we'll feel a pulse. So normal pedal pulses for chronic venous insufficiency ulcers. So what is the um, pain with the ulcer? So they might have some pain in the ulcer itself, just because there's like a wound there. But um, if we're comparing it to an arterial ulcer, that is going to be super painful because again, if the blood flow is restricted to the area, you're gonna have a lot of pain because essentially you're having ischemia to the area. Now, because the ischemia is going to affect the arteries and this is venous, you're not going to have that ischemia showing up and it's going to be all right pain-wise. So just some pain due to the pressure of all the edema and the swelling in the leg. And with that being said, here's the big thing and the boards wants you to know this, elevation will decrease pain for a chronic venous insufficiency ulcer. So if you lift the leg and they have chronic in venous insufficiency, you are okay. It's probably going to help this patient. If you lift up the leg of somebody with an arterial in venous insufficiency, um, they're gonna be really sad and it's going to hurt. So they have pain with elevation if it's arterial and pain will decrease if it's venous. So how are we going to treat this patient? Again, as I said before, elevating the leg is going to help with the edema and decrease the pain for chronic venous insufficiency. Proper wound dressing, so using calcium alginate to help absorb all the exudate, that's super important. Monitoring the wound and making sure to take pictures to kind of see like, 
Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? What's it look like? Honestly, like I would say most of the time, if you're seeing this like an inpatient kind of stuff, if you just take a picture and then send it to like the wound care nurse, they're going to love you or like any sort of dermatology people, just take a picture of it. They like that because then it's easier than describing it. And then you can monitor it with like putting like a little like ruler next to it and stuff like that. And that'll go in the objective. So making sure to strengthen the lower extremities to help compensate for the heavy legs. So this leg is going to feel like they, you know, how patients, when they have a boot on, it's just dragging behind them. And it's like super heavy. That's how it's going to feel, but it's like their actual leg attached to them. So got to strengthen the lower extremity to help keep them moving. Um, and then they're probably going to be hanging out with wound care. So no good bit about wound care with dressings and then understanding that this patient's probably going to have a lot of treatments surrounding wound care. They might have like zinc oxide treatments and stuff like that just to help with wound healing and stuff like that. But constant communication with wound care nurses or wound care PTs or OTs, whoever is doing wound care or you guys PTAs. Um, key words for chronic venous insufficiency is going to be symptoms will alleviate with elevation the wound will be located along the medial malleolus or above the medial malleolus or along the medial side of the leg. Remember, arterials on the other side on the lateral. So medial for venous and then shallow irregular shape. So remember, it's like a Patrick the Star kind of shape. <laughs> I don't know why. It just looked like that. And then heavy, heavy, heavy tons of exudate. Because remember, the veins don't work. So all the fluids just flying out of there. Normal skin temperature, because remember, it's not the blood flow from the arteries is not restricted. So again, the temperature of the skin will be normal because that warm blood is still going to the area. And then the pedal pulses are present because the arteries are still working with chronic venous insufficiency ulcers. The problem is on the return trip, it's not working. I remember on the return trip, there's no pulses. All right, guys, sample question today. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient diagnosed with chronic venous insufficiency. Which clinical presentation would we not expect to see with this patient? One, pain with elevation. Two, located around medial malleolus. Three, a regularly shaped wound bed. Or four, normal pedal pulses. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, guys, so the answer is number one, pain with elevation. So remember, for chronic venous insufficiency, the pain will not increase with elevation. Pain will actually decrease with elevation. So remember, this question said, what will we not expect to see? This patient should not be any in, in any additional pain when they elevate their leg. So um, the located around medial malleolus, yes, we would see that with this patient. And so since it's a question that says, which is not expected to see, that this question, this answer is wrong. So um, the rest of these are all uh, presentations of a chronic venous insufficiency. Uh, so located around medial malleolus, because remember, arterial would be on the lateral side, irregular shaped wound bed. Remember, arterial is smooth and the normal pedal pulses. And remember, with arterial, you would have none. So understanding that with chronic venous insufficiency, the medial malleolus, irregular shaped wound bed, and normal pedal pulses are all like presentations of that. And the pain with elevation is of as indicative of arterial, while decreased pain with elevation is venous. So I hope that that was helpful. Again, make sure you guys know the difference between venous and arterial, but this is just covering venous right now. So I hope that this was helpful. And if nobody has any questions, I'm going to hop off. So thank you guys for being here tonight. And I hope that this was helpful guys, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.